Hi everyone. Eileen here and it's the weekend so it's time for another Lavinia Stamps video tutorial from me to you and I thought for a change I would do a really colourful card, a colourful background and I have to say I thoroughly enjoyed it. In fact I've done it twice. <laughs> I did this video last night, yesterday evening and unfortunately it was too dark there were shadows everywhere from my light. So uh, I thought, right, I'll have to do it again in the morning. And here I am. So I've got two examples to show you. My original and the one I did, uh, the video I did last night. So let's try again. Okay. I've got a couple of sheets of copy paper and my topper size for this card using Lavinia Stamps Multifarious Cream cardstock is uh, 12 centimetres by 14 centimetres. And I'm going to blend in the background first of all using Distress Inks and some of these larger blending brushes. They're makeup brushes. I think they're for foundation and powder and stuff. Right. Squeeze lemonade. Picked raspberry. Speckled egg. They are the three colours that I'll be blending in the background with normal distress inks. Starting off with squeeze lemonade. Make sure that I'm in shot okay for you. So, large makeup brush, different shape to the others, but we'll do the same thing. And get some ink on the brush and then into the middle. Now, I'm not worried too much about the blend of this card. Um, I'm not bothered how smooth it is, whether or not it's got any splodges on it whether or not it gets a few lines because I'm putting a stencil over the top and that stencil will remove um, any of the marks or mistakes in the blending but this yellow squeeze lemonade area I want that to be right slap bang in the middle and I want to leave some of it with the original yellow colour. So I'm just now going to blend around about the outside with the other colours. So this is for pink, pink raspberry. Now I want to protect my cardstock from any oil in my fingers and I want to avoid this harsh line here at the side so I'm going to keep it well out of the way of the ink and the brush so just a circular motion this pad is not very wet so I'm not bothered about having the ink too dark or too intense I just want a fairly pale background but bright so that's, and then one more area in pink on the other side. And then on to speckled egg. And this again is another ink pad that isn't really very wet. It's quite dry in fact. Need to re-inking, I must do that. Just laying some colour down. Look, I'm not even really blending it into the pink. Just covering up all of the cream. Like so.
Right, let's move these away. But I'm keeping the picked raspberry and the squeezed lemonade close by because I'm going to be using those with the stencil. And well, where have I put my stencil? Oh dear. Okay, sorry about that. It was over on my other desk. Here it is. And this stencil is called Charming. And it is. It's lovely. Now, the stencil itself and goes from uh, the smaller parts of the image and then as it goes across the stencil the image gets larger larger spaces in the pattern so just popping it on with the larger area over on the right hand side and then using pick raspberry first with the same brush the makeup brush Not bothering to tape the stencil down, but now I'm just going to do a circular motion. Not right to the outer edges, it's not worth it because um, I'll be colouring those outer edges in a darker colour to frame it. So just concentrating on a wide area, about oh, more than two thirds, nearly all of the stencil itself. Uh, the cardstock itself, so that I've got that. Now you can leave it there if you wish, because that does look rather nice. But for a change, I just thought I would do something different. And I'm putting the stencil back on, not matching up the pattern. I've moved it over just a little bit more. Just plonking it down any old how, really. And then taking the squeezed lemonade Filling up the makeup brush with the yellow, and then I'm doing the same thing again circular motion right over the top. Now, you don't have to do this if you don't want to. I just wanted to add an extra layer and get a different pattern. And what it means is it looks, or it will do as I lift off the stencil, as if the stencil pattern is out of focus. And it's just added another dimension. Right. Stencils finished with. Now we're coming on to the stamping. First off, I'm going to put the beautiful fairy in. And this is Ariel. Ariel large. There are obviously two sizes in Ariel. There's a small one and the large one. A really elegant and pretty stamp and I'm using VersaFine Clear Nocturne for this. I've got a stamp pad underneath my work that you can use a stamp press if you want to. Gentle tapping, not pressing the ink down too heavily onto the stamp, it just squidges into areas you really don't want to get it into. Gentle tapping, take your time. Especially on the more solid areas of the fairy. Right, that should do me. Dry cloth, just to remove any surplus ink from around the edge. 
and then I'm popping her down about just off from the middle I think and a little bit up from the bottom just trying to see the original card right I think that will do right I've made the decision and now let the ink soak in you will find that because you've got a uh, three layers of distress ink now one with the blending and two with the stencil you will find that that can act as a sort of resist to any other ink that you put on top so I haven't dried the layers of distressing, but you might find that will help. But I think that I'll be okay with this. And it sometimes means that if you've got a, an ink underneath acting as a resist, then your stamp layer isn't quite as clear as you would like it to be. Right, let's have a look. She doesn't look too bad. Bits missed there, but I can colour those in. So I have a polychromous pencil. You can get a paintbrush and use the Nocturne ink itself, which quite often is the best thing to do because black comes in all different shades, believe it or not, and the ink that you've used is obviously best to stick with. All right, so just, I prefer a pencil because it gives me total control. And if I make a mistake, which I have further down, I can use an eraser on it, which is what I'm going to do now. Now this is a Faber-Castell eraser, pencil eraser, and I'm not using my normal eraser because it's too large. I've just got a stray bit of colour in this gap between the bottom of, of the fairy's legs here. And I want to remove that or at least make it so that it isn't quite as noticeable. And that's it, I think that will do. So yeah, really handy because you can get into really small areas and uh, take out the colours or the mistakes. Right. Next. Next is the woodland hair and he is gorgeous. You get a set of two. So I'll show you that. Woodland hairs, and I'm using this one, and then you get another one, same size, but obviously different image. Absolutely beautiful and so useful. And this one is gazing up, so it's going to be gazing up at the wand of the fairy. Again absolute gentle tapping covering the whole image that looks pretty good to me let's give that a go there's no surplus ink on there so down we go and he is just going to be under the wand the star on the end of the wand, like so. Let the ink soak in. And up, gorgeous. Look at the detail on that hair, isn't it gorgeous? Right. I'm gonna do a quick blast with the heat gun because that ink is really wet.
And the next stamp that I'm using will be the Star Cluster. And I'm using red ink for this. Glamorous from Versafine Claire. Very versatile stamp. Really good for Christmas. In this instance, it isn't Christmas, so you can use it for anything. <laughs> Gentle tapping again. And just taking a dry cloth, because I've got some ink around the outside, like so here. Now there is an area here where there are no stars or very few. So I just want to remove that ink so that doesn't go on in error. And all the stars over here, as I'm looking at it, they're on the right hand side and they'll stay on the right hand side. So I'm gonna turn it over and I'm just going to pop the stars down over the top of my hair like so. Some of the stars will just be off the card and that's fine. And there, he's encircled now by all the stars. Two more stamps to go. And this is Sacred Spells, a firm favourite, as you know, if you watch my videos. It looks well loved, and it is. <laughs> um, Sacred Spells, beautiful verse, but I just adore the font. It is one of the most elegant fonts that Tracy has used regarding her stamps, in my opinion. I love it. So I'm just going to use... Versifying Claire Twilight for this stamp. Lovely dark blue. And I need to stamp off. So I've got a bit of copy paper ready. Gentle tapping. It's quite an inky, rich pad, this one quite new so just going to make sure I don't get any stray bits anywhere and then down onto copy paper pressing quite firmly just to remove the first generation of the ink and then I'm going up to the top of the card on the right hand side and I'm not going to press too heavily and it will be off the card. And then over to the left again, not re-inking, not pressing too heavily. I just want a whisper of the text. And then back over to the right so that it goes right the way down the card. Can you see that? Like so. And I think that will do me. It's just to add another layer of texture into the background. And it's a very easy way of doing it. Now, the last stamp that I'm adding is from a set called Three Blessings. And this is a blessing, it's happiness. Then you've also got, I think it's, oh, I better have a look. I know you've got love, yes, no, it's faith. Yes, happiness, faith, and hope. Verse fine, clear. Nocturne again. And I've got ink on my fingers now, so I need to be careful. And I would like to pop that in there, here. I just want to ensure that it is straight. Just down and gentle pressure and up. 
that's fine. And another blast with the heat gun. Just to ensure that ink is all dry everywhere. Because I'm going over the top of some of the images. Well, the fairy image with the moon mask. And I don't want the ink to move. And this is the positive image from one of the moon masks from Lavinia Stamps. You'll find a set on the uh, Lavinia Stamps website. I'm just going to pop that down over the top of my fairy. And I'm using a Lavinia Stamp stencil brush. These are lovely. I've only just started using these. And they're so soft. The bristles are so soft and the top is domed. So it makes using these around your masks and around the edges of the card a doddle, really. So easy to use. Now I want to move my pad away here because I need the glass mat now. And I need you to see what I'm doing. So popping that down onto the fairy, I'm taking, mm, that was a mistake. Hold on, I've got to get rid of that. I don't want the ink coming from the pad itself. I want it from the brush. So taking the brush and the ink pad, which is Twilight, down onto the mat. You can't see it very well, I'm so sorry. It's a black mat, of course, <laughs> typical. So it removes some of the ink so it won't be too strong as I apply very gently coming out to give me this aura away from the moon. And it will highlight my fairy. Holding it tight. No more ink. I'm not putting any more on. I've got more than enough. Coming out a bit more. Like so. And there she is. That was easy, wasn't it? These are really useful. So, more ink and onto the mat again. And then off because now I'm going around the edges. Around the edges with the twilight. Again, not too much ink on your brush. Just go back to the ink that you've got on the mat. Just doing the bottom of the edge of the card to frame it. And all round the sides. Circular motion. Still got ink on the mat, believe it or not. But I need a bit more now. So from the pad onto the mat. And then back onto the card, like so. So that's one layer. Now I'm going to go round again using the same colour, just to increase the depth of colour. But if you put too much on in one go, you get the sort of a splodgy look here and there, and I don't want that. I want a nice smooth framed edge. bit more on the corners to emphasize the corners a bit more on this one and then I'm changing ink pads now and brushes and I'm using 
a pink. I'm using Purple Delight. And again, on loading the brush down onto the mat, I suppose that is Purple Delight. Well, yep, yeah, it is. So I'm just going to give that another coating so that I get more purple tones in. Mix with the blue underneath. Don't want to cover all that up. Gives it a nice shaded edge. Minding the fingers are not covered in ink. Done that before now. <laughs> Pick up more ink from the mat. get the idea of this really good and I think that I'm just about there the final thing with the edges that I'm going to do is to take a black sharpie Right, I've got a black Sharpie here. And I'm just going to hold the card down tight and just run it along the edge, not on the top of the card, but at the side so that it just draws the line onto the copy paper, but the residue of that line is just framing this card and giving it a nice, neat edge all the way around. Barbara Gray does this, Barbara from Clarity Stamps. I've learned a lot from Barbara and Tracy as well, of course. I've been watching their videos and stuff for years and years. Right, okay. So, the final thing to do is to change my copy paper for a clean piece. And then with a quickie glue pen, one of these, you'll find these on the website as well. I'm just going to highlight the moon. I always get wonky lines in this. Now, I don't want to ruin this now because this isn't bad, this one. Oh, it's just starting to flow nicely. Lovely morning here. Beautiful, in fact. Sunny and bright. I'm Zooming today with some of my crafty friends. I'm looking forward to that. Right, so there we are. I think that will do. And then I've got some Glamour Dust. It's um, crystal. I've had this for absolute years. Who remembers the old paper mill shops in their local shopping centres? We had one down here um, in the dockyard in Chatham. A new shopping centre opened up and there was a paper mill shop in there. I used to spend a fortune and that's where I bought this. <laughs> All closed down now, unfortunately, but I still buy online. But this, still going. Still going strong, years old. So pop that in 
to there. There she is. Pop it back in the pot. Have to be careful with this. We've got animals here, ferrets and our daisy dog, and some glitters. You need to be careful in your in the paws of the dogs or cats. So I'm very careful. Any on the floor and straight out with the vacuum cleaner. Right, I have a bin by me. So I think the res residue of this glitter will go in there. And we're almost done now. Um, I'm looking for my do-it-yourself brush, yes. So back to the bin. I'm just going to get rid of the residue of this glitter. Now it's gone. And I shall get the original card just to double check that I haven't missed anything. Pop my display board down. And this is my original card. Now the original card size for the card blank that I've used I've done one layer and then I've used a card blank. So the top of size is 14 by 12 and then I did a centimetre all the way round. I think that was 15 by 13 for the matted layer. And then the um, the card blank itself is 14 point, oh, it must have been 15 and a half by 16 and a half centimetres. I think I've got the sizes wrong on the back. But anyway, so I've done a layer all around the edge and then onto the card blank and all in cream again. And I thought that looked lovely. And there it is, fits perfectly. So now there's three of them now. <laughs> one. <laughs> and one from just now and one from last night. So I've got three. I've got some birthdays coming up with friends. I think that uh, they will be receiving one of these. Well, I've had a really great time. I've thoroughly enjoyed showing you this. And tomorrow's uh, From Me To You video tutorial will also be another colourful card. And uh, I hope that you have a lovely Saturday. See you tomorrow. Enjoy your weekend. Bye for now. Thanks for looking.